Hello all, this is Jetta Crow with another haul video for the week of June 8th, 2023. And as always, we're going to start off with the comic books. And this week I have Marvel books because I'm after the last few months of doing my Marvel and DC books from Discount Comic Book Service, I decided to start doing my Marvel books through my local comic book shop again. And uh, so we'll be having Marvel books on a more regular basis again. But anyway, the first Marvel book to show off this week happens to be a brand new series. It is Loki number one with the legacy number of 27. Focus there. Come on, focus. Well, it says legacy number 27. But yeah, Loki. Cool, cool, cool. Just in time for uh, the new season of the show, which I think comes out this fall. Next up, we have Red Goblin, number five. Carnage Reigns, part four of seven. And it's going to be an incomplete story for me because I don't read Carnage. Wrapping up the Marvel books, we have Spider-Man, number nine. Legacy number 165, Maxed Out Part 2. We got OG Electro right there. Nice. Moving on to Image Comics, we have Scott Snyder's and Tony Daniels' Noctera number 15. And it is a really nice cover. I, I, I really like the color composition on this one. And I, I generally like Tony Daniel artwork uh, in general. I after he's done with this, I wouldn't mind if he uh, did like a revival of the tenth. All right, moving on. We hustle from Image Comics. We have The Walking Dead Deluxe number sixty-four, Fear of the Hunters part three of five, which was loosely adapted into the TV show as the Terminus arc. Loosely adapted, so that's not Bob, that's Dale, but it's still tainted meat. <laughs> Alright, moving on to Dynamite, we have Purgatory Must Die, issue number five, which concludes this mini-series, and it's a, another nice cover, because as always, I get the Lisner cover whenever available, and I like the new 2023 signature there, it's a nod to uh, the Three Tiers of Dawn. Alright, uh, from Udon, we have Street Fighter VI, issue number three. One more issue to go of this weekly mini-series that also serves as a prologue to the upcoming uh, video game of the same name. And I'm glad that Street Fighter is back to being multi-console. I'm an Xbox player, so Street Fighter V being exclusive to PlayStation was a bitter pill. Alright, from What Not Publishing, we have Astrobots, issue number two. And then... Finally, wrapping up the comic books for the week from Zenoscope, we have Grim Spotlight, Masami, and it is 32 pages of content. Ooh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up the comic books, but that does not wrap up this haul video because I do have some Power Rangers Lightning Collection action figures to show off. And I'll probably be doing some unboxing videos of these guys in the following weeks. So, first up, we have the Lost Galaxy Pink Ranger, which kind of made a surprise appearance in a previous video. But glad to have this in the collection. I'm missing Damon, so this doesn't quite complete the team for me yet. Uh, I, I fixed that. I, I'm fixing that because I, I went ahead and finally ordered uh, the Lost Galaxy Green Ranger after holding off on him for a while. But uh, with her and Maya, which I got uh, last week, this uh, does mean all six Lost Galaxy Rangers are now available for your purchasing needs. Or collecting needs, however you want to phrase that. All right. Next up, we have one of my favorite suits of all time. It is the Dino Thunder Black Ranger. One of my favorites. We have the OG himself, Mr. I, I, excuse me, Dr. Tommy Oliver. 
Um, yeah, this is probably my favorite Tommy suit, even more so than uh, either Mighty Morphin Green or White. So, uh, really love this suit. Glad to have him in the in the collection. And this also completes the Dino Thunder team. So, yay, yay for completing teams in the Lightning Collection. Uh, and now that the team is complete, we gotta have someone for them to fight. So I also got Dino Thunder Mezagog. It's a figure, 40 million years in the making. Highly collectible. <sighs> I love Mezagog. Uh, probably my favorite big bad. Uh, definitely in my top five right there with Lord Zed, Astronema, Rancic, and Lothor. Lothor is kind of my wild card, but yeah, one of my favorite big bads. Uh, from a more recent season, we have who I feel is kind of an underrated ranger. We have the Dino Thunder Blue Ranger. I know Ollie is not exactly the most popular of the Dino Fury team, but uh, I like him. I like that he's a jerk that actually learns his lessons, but it takes him a long time to grow. I mean, it's, it's pretty much the same reason I liked Eric, the Quantum Ranger, back in the day. So, cool, cool, cool. Glad to have uh, another Dino Fury Ranger in the collection. So we're halfway through this team. So as we got red, green, and now blue. So we just need pink, black, gold, and Void Knight. And then we can start on Cosmic Fury. All right, and I, that, that is all of the figures from Wave 14 that I got. But I got one more, and it is the Turbo Invisible Phantom Ranger. Let me flip that around for you. But uh, yeah, glad to have this in the collection, and uh, yeah, it's awesome. Awesome. It's, it's one of the most authentic figures they've ever done. I mean, look at them. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. But there he is for real. The Turbo Invisible Phantom Ranger. I mean, I, I kind of figured they were going to do this when they first did the Phantom Ranger a few years back. Just because uh, it's a Phantom Ranger is a completely unique design it, within Power Rangers. It's not one that shares a mold with other Rangers. So it probably was going to do this as a way to get a second figure out of that mold. And... Well, let's be honest, the, the Morphinaut from the Power Rangers Universe comic, that, that purely exists just so they can get a third figure out of this mold, which I saw. So I, I fully expect Morphinaut to be announced by the end of the year. But uh, I like it, I, and I love clear plastic figures. Um, the, when I, back when I used to collect Transformers, when you got the rare clear plastic figure like Beast Wars, Spidor, I, I jumped all over them. I, I loved clear plastic figures were so cool. Not not always uh, the best for sturdiness, because clear plastic figures can and have been known to break, but uh, I'll be extra careful with them. But that's assuming that this figure is in good shape to begin with. And we'll find out when I do an unboxing video of them. Check back in the next couple of weeks to see uh, how that goes. And in the meantime, that is it for this video, guys. Uh, thank you for watching it to the end, and you know what? Have a great week, but before before I tell you the rest of the spiel, well, there's a video right there, there's a video right there, you can subscribe right there, and you can have a nice week, have a nice weekend, later, and...